So welcome back to the Living in Southern Utah channel. This is Sean and Courtney here with the number one relocation team here in Southern Utah. Now you are thinking about retiring to the state of Utah, but you may be wondering like where is the best place to retire? So what we're going to talk about in this video is we're going to talk about, you know, what are some of the best places to retire in Utah and specifically in Southern Utah. So you may be thinking about retiring here because you may have heard that Utah is a great place to retire. For example, retireguide.com actually just ranked Utah as the number two state to retire in the entire United States. And they base this off of a lot of different factors. For example, um, because of Utah's low poverty rate, because of its high rankings in healthcare, it was ranked number 11 in the whole country, well-being as number 10, um, life expectancy, the ninth, the ninth best life expectancy in the US, and also because uh, it had one of the lowest monthly costs for assisted living services in the United States with $3,500. And I can tell you, because I had to do the whole ass assisted living thing with my mom, that is an incredible price. Yes, like, it's I, more expensive than other places. Yeah, it, incredible. So, uh, <laughs> so yes. And if you are thinking about moving here and you need somebody to help you buy a house, definitely reach out to Sean and I because we are licensed realtors here in the state of Utah and our team will make sure to get, you know, as much as possible, exactly what you need here in Southern Utah. And don't forget to subscribe. So what's interesting is that as we're recording this video, because you know, it's 2023, right? So I kept looking around, you know, where are all the lists? Where are all the 2023 lists? They are not out yet. They are not out yet. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the methodology that niche.com uses to find the best places to retire in all of Utah. So last year, obviously we're talking about 2023, but since the new list isn't out yet, so what were the cities that ranked the best in all of Utah? Well, actually like two of them were actually right here. So there was Ivan's as well as St. George. Yeah, so Ivan's was number one and St. George was number two. And I'm pretty sure Santa Clara was on that list too. Yeah, I think which is eight, like, something like that. between Ivan's and St. George. It's like Ivan's, Santa Clara, St. George. Yes. So yes. So Southern Utah. Uh, so so Utah itself is number two in the country. Yes. And Ivan and St. George are number one and two in Utah. So pretty on, good. On last year's list. I don't know what it is right now, but let's just talk about the methodology and then you can decide for yourself if that actually that methodology makes sense for you yeah like is southern utah a great place to retire in utah yeah because obviously do you actually like sunny days do you like <laughs> like enjoying all the outdoor stuff like do you like these things because if you do this methodology there's a lot of stuff that makes sense about it yes yeah, so sean is mentioning sunny days one of the things on the list is like what is the average sunny days in this place that we're talking in a about? given year in any given year. And uh, St. George has about 255 days of sun. Which is kind of actually on the low side to me. It yeah, feels like, like it we get low. closer to 300, but yeah. again, that's, I mean, I'll defer to them, but it, it feels like it's way more than just 255. Yeah, I think another reason why it seems low is because it does sometimes get cloudy here. But it's not rainy all the time. Yeah, it's not, it does, you barely get any rain, and then it's never like that cold. In fact, I think St. George has on average zero days of extreme cold than, you know, compared to the rest of the United States. Yes. So, yeah, even though, you know, it might get a little cloudy, uh, you know, a monsoon might come in, in in the summer, but, I mean, it's just, it's never, like, that cold here. Yes. So. In fact, I mean, I can tell you several people I've come across that, you know, made their way from up north down south here because they're going, you know, I will take the hot days because we yeah. do get hot days here, so, you know, we, we're not sugarcoating this. Our, our summers are hot. And then mm -hmm. the thing is that they'll go, I'll take that any day over having to shovel snow and deal with that stuff in the winter. And some of these places, their winter doesn't end till like yeah. almost June. I mean, yeah. so so here we don't, you know, shoveling yeah. snow, we might get a light dusting of snow every so often. Sometimes every blue moon we'll, we'll get maybe a little kind of a bit of a snowstorm or something like that. It's yeah, like maybe every 25 years. Yeah, it's very, very rare. But again, it's not something that will consistently be... Snow will be on the ground all winter long or anything like that. So, yeah. you know, so just be aware that if you're wanting the snow, you know, we do have, you know, Brian Head is about an hour and a half away, but that's not really what we're known for here. Yeah. And in fact, the methodology is like, what's the sunniest place, right? <laughs> so because St. George is sunny, that's why it ranks so high. Yes. So another big uh, methodology reasoning for this ranking is cost of living. Yeah. So Southern Utah, on average, I like to use bestplaces.net for a good um, idea of what the cost of living is. So it's a little bit higher than average in terms of the US average, yes. but it is lower than the average for all of Utah. So St. George is a little bit lower, just a little bit, not like a ton, 
just a little bit lower average cost of living than if, let's say, you're living like in Salt Lake City area. Yes, exactly. And actually, on best places on that, they say like, you know, okay, a hundred point score is your average score throughout the entire country, right? So the state can count the coastal areas, the Midwest, all that stuff. And St. George, I think was like 107, 108 on that number. And really, actually, the biggest component of that that really affected St. George being slightly above average was the fact that our, our housing is on the more expensive side yes. for the country. So mm -hmm. for the country, we're definitely higher up than than average. But yeah. if you look at the other components, it's like transportation, energy, you know, utilities, groceries, that kind of stuff, we're actually below average when it comes to these other, you know, like in general, like with these other categories. Yeah. But for pricing, as far as pricing is concerned for homes, we're actually cheaper than the than the state average. So we take yes. the entire state of Utah. Like we're actually about, like I'd say that same. I think we're, like the entire state of Utah is about five eighty five. I think, and we're at about five thirty five as far as your average is concerned. So we're good. We're almost like ten percent cheaper than the state average. Yeah. And then another methodology that they use is crime and safety. And you know, it's really hard for us to say, oh, this is safe because everyone has a different idea of what safety is. But one thing I will notice is that you can go on, you know, lots of different uh, crime and safety statistics. Or, or websites and St. George generally speaking is better than average right like you'll see the statistics for St. George and you'll see the US average or you know especially like a big city is way better than like a big city but you know you can research that for yourself and one thing I think is kind of weird I mean like this is just anecdotally speaking I mean we actually had a crime and safety incident today meaning that we literally never think about crime and safety and here is an example so what happened today? <laughs> yes. So as my wife was scolding me, basically. <laughs> so I, I had my checkbook with me, which I never carry on me. I have my mm -hmm. back pocket or whatever. And we went, you know, we, we had, we did a couple of errands and I was getting ready to write, write a check because that's why I carried it with me and my checkbook was gone. And so I was like, oh great, where did I drop this thing? How did I lose this? And so if I was in some other metropolitan area, you know, definitely me, immediately need to just Talk it up for loss, call your bank, cancel everything because yeah. it's going to be gone, gone. Yeah. And, um, and hopefully and possibly in the wrong hands. In this case, you know, I went to the couple locations, went to their customer service counter, said, hey, do you guys have a checkbook? And one of them did. And so I was going, yeah, so okay. That means so somebody picked it up. A good Samaritan. Picked it up and brought it to the customer service. And was like, oh, somebody dropped this. Yeah, went out of their way, right? Yeah. And, and this is not unusual. Yeah. Like, I mean, this is kind of one of those things where, again, anecdotally speaking, my experience has been that, you know, people have done that. I mean, I found myself doing that myself. Like, I happened to see someone's ID and I was like, okay, to turn it into the counter. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things where you kind of, like, if I was coming from where we came from, it was already like, you know, don't yeah. even bother making the drive. It's gone. Just start canceling. Here I was going, you know, I should at least see if by chance it's like it was turned in. And it was. So, again, there's a quick little anecdotal statement. Mm -hmm. So then another big criteria for their rankings is what is your access to doctors? And this is something that I think people find surprising about St. George. I was actually talking to someone the other day, and she's trying to get her parents to move out here because she and her family just moved out here. And they're like, you know, we're really concerned. They're concerned because they're not going to have their same doctors. And I'm like, well, did you know that the St. George Regional Hospital is actually ranked as the number two hospital in all of Utah? So all of those big hospitals are in Salt Lake City area. St. George Regional Hospital ranks number two. Yes. So St. George is actually famous for having really good health care. Yes, actually, and it's amazing because, okay, this southern Utah region, this Washington County area, it's about 200,000 people. You drive by this hospital, it feels like out of place because mm -hmm. it's such a beautiful, like a very nice hospital building, a large hospital, and you're kind of going, this should be in a bigger city. It doesn't feel like it should be, it just seems out of place here. Yeah. But again, it's here, the doctors here are in general great. Obviously, as we see, it's ranked very high. And so you're definitely not missing out when it comes to you know healthcare. And another way you can kind of gauge this too is if you are reading any you know trade magazines for doctors, you know, uh, hospitals are trying to recruit the best doctors, right? You'll see tons of advertisements for St. George because St. George is a great place to live. So, you know, the best doctors can choose where they want to live. So they're advertising it and then, you know, it's in a very attractive region. So they're like, oh, you know, this looks like a great place to live. Like, yeah. I'll go here, right? Exactly. So it's a high competition in terms of doctors who want to live here. Exactly. So another big criteria that they use is access to golf. Now, if there's anything <laughs> that St. George is famous for, is golf. And not just golf, 
year-round golf. I know somebody recently like uh, asked us, is is the golf year-round in, in St. George? Because it I think is. Yeah, because people are like, oh, you live in Utah, it must be freezing in the winter. And we're like, no, actually, it's not. People just don't understand that, right? It's year-round. Like, it's winter right now, January, and I see people golfing literally every day. Yeah, I can't tell you how many people, when I tell them that I live in St. George, Utah, they think that we're in the mountains. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's just at first thought. You think, they think the entire state is elevated up to 7,000 feet plus. Mm -hmm. and you're going, no, actually, this region is about 24, 2,500 feet above elevation or above sea level, and you're going, this is very pleasant year-round weather. Well, again, summertime is hot, but yeah. basically you're, you know, you're able to golf all year round, and we have tons of golf courses here, too. Yeah, I, I don't know how many, like 19, 20, something like that, but, you know, go into the golf magazines, and you'll see, like, St. George is always getting these rankings, like, best place to golf in the American Southwest, or, like, hidden gem of the American Southwest. Southwest. It's just... So, like, the golf courses here are so beautiful. You've got this beautiful scenery, these red rocks, these lava rocks, like, the contrast. It's just great. I mean, if you love golf, St. George is a great, great spot for Yeah, it. we actually have this new, like, golf resort that's being built right now, this new golf course, which is incredible because you have the red rocks with the lava rocks with the green grass. It's just this, it's just, it's like, it's like someone, like someone painted this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's talking about the Black Desert Resort. So that's being built as we speak, but then right by it is Entrada, which has just been like renovated. But again, there's golf courses like literally everywhere. Yeah, like, everywhere. Like so if yeah. you're going north, mm -hmm. south, east, west, like less west but more east. But yeah, there's tons of golf courses. So another criteria is access to recreation and fitness facilities. And we have plenty of that because St. George is actually, it's got a big like recreation community, like a lot of community of like runners, mountain bikers, hiking, climbers. And again, these are activities that you can do all year round. Well, as case in point, is there some sort of event that really tests the lengths to which someone can actually enjoy these this, these recreational activities. Yes, that would be the Ironman. We host the Ironman uh, at least once a year. And we had the World Championships last year. Yeah, and we've had the, we actually had the World Championships of the full Ironman last year. And then we have had the World Championships of the half Ironman here several times. It kind of like rotates, so it's not always here. But we always have an event here. Yeah, and that just goes to show, okay, we have, obviously we have like the reservoirs for swimming, we which we don't have a ton of them, but we have that ability. So obviously for Ironman, they're able to use that tons of bike paths. I mean, mm -hmm. it's crazy. And therefore, like running pa you know, running paths, bike paths, mm -hmm. Zion's like, you know, not not even really an hour away. And you're able to do some of the, like, again, most scenic, beautiful national parks in the country is like right here. So again, yeah, for recreational activities, it's, it's hard to beat. Yeah. And we also, if you're looking for gyms and stuff like that, we also have a lot of really nice gyms here. And we also have public facilities like we have. This. The city of St. George has a really cool, you know, aquatics facility. And then we've got like a really nice gym and aquatics facility in the city of Washington. So I'm like, yeah. And we also have it like Santa Clara, right? No, actually, that's St. George. Well, it's like there's literally in the dividing line. Yeah. It's like right there. So, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like bleeds into each other. Yes. So, but anyways, if you're looking for like a cool gym or like a nice pool to do like uh, swimming or water aerobics, we definitely have that here, like in spades. And then also like, you know, for instance, other activities, right? So, you know, like, like people love to do pickleball. There's tons of those courts around. And actually, even in the summer. So obviously, just so you know, the entire year you can do stuff outdoors, right? Yeah. It's, and obviously, even in the winter, which is, you know, we're famous for being able to do spring and fall, of course, as well. Summer does get hot. However, if you plan your day right, really what you want to do is just make, make your morning, like, you know, just, just plan on in the morning doing your, let's say, outdoor activity because it will get hot as the day progresses, but it doesn't mean that you, you're stuck inside the entire day. Just, yeah. you know, just plan your stuff in the morning. Mm -hmm. Another criteria is access to grocery stores. And I think that the grocery stores here, I really actually really like them. As I've, you know, learned what is offered here, you really can get whatever you want. I, I personally really like Harmon's. We do have a nice farmer's market here. So we do slant on the whole, you know, we have a bias towards organic stuff. Yeah, meaning Sean and I. Like, yes. we like to buy, like, farmer's market organic, that kind of stuff. So if that's what you're into, like... You know. Lens, mm -hmm. natural grocers, which we actually we yeah. just kind of more or less discovered. We, it was he we knew it was here. I just didn't know what they offered, and they're actually they they, yeah. they actually offer a lot of that stuff. So if you need Harmon's Lens uh, and natural grocers as well as the farmers market, yeah. if you're into like really kind of you know again organic farmers kind of type uh, like eating, you're covered. It's actually pretty awesome. Like I was actually pleasantly surprised because yeah we don't have 
Whole Foods and that kind of stuff, but really these other ones, they, they fit the bill for sure. And then, you know, if you don't care about organic, you don't care about anything like that. <laughs> we still have like Smith's, I think it's like a really good store. I really like Smith's. Oh, uh, Walmart actually. It's got, like, yeah, Walmart grocery has, section. has good groceries. And I just found organic there too. Yeah, and Target, even Target has like a lot of good stuff. And Costco. <laughs> yes, we do buy a lot from Costco. So your shopping is really covered here in terms of like your day to day items. And then we're just gonna give a little bonus here because this isn't on the list. But we like to describe St. George as a place where you can have your cake and eat it too because it's just such a nice community. It's nice and pleasant and just like, you know, it's not too crowded. It's just a great place to live. But if you're ever needing, you know, that little bit of that like... That little itch that needs to be scratched. Of that big city life, right? Vegas is two hours down the road. You can go there just for the day. You can get the shopping in that you want. You can get the high, you know, the high-end dining that you want. The you entertainment. Want the entertainment. The gambling, if you want to do that. <laughs> The drinking. The drinking. If, you have that, if you're into drinking, yeah. like obviously Vegas certainly has. I've, I've heard people have occasionally gotten, you know, had alcohol in Vegas. Yes. And if you come here to live in St. George and you, you know, start talking to people, you will find a lot of people go to Vegas. Like a lot of people use that as like, you know, it's just when I need something that isn't offered in St. George, it's very easy to go there. But you don't have to deal with like, you know, the, the big city life that you deal with living in Vegas. Yeah. I mean, it's it's less even about going, but knowing that you have it there. I, I, I would feel like... Like when we made our move here, if we if I didn't know that Vegas was you know two hours down the road, I, I would have had a harder time. I'll be yeah. completely honest, right? Because yeah. I, I, because we come from a big city, and to kind of come from a big city to a smaller you know smaller metropolitan area, it, while we do have a lot of options here, it's still like it felt like it's something we'd be lacking if mm -hmm. we if if we we'd like we'd almost be sacrificing a little too much. But knowing that Vegas is just down the road a little bit, you know, and again it's just a fifteen freeway, so it's like a straight shot down there. Yeah. I mean, just the fact that it's there, you know, not that you have to go there every weekend or anything like that. It's just knowing that you can go there. And yeah. it's just like that. That's just a big psychological benefit mm -hmm. where you don't have to live that big city life. You, you live your normal, like, quality of life that we feel like what we have here. But again, you have that at your disposal. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's our video. And remember, we are licensed realtors here in the state of Utah. So as much as we love making these videos, what we love more is to help you with your real estate needs. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home, what you want to do is you want to give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. Or you can reach out to us via WhatsApp. However you want to get a hold of us, we've got your back.